What's going on, gardeners? It's Monday, May 29th, and summer is almost here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And on today's video, I'm going to show you a simple trick that is guaranteed to double your tomato harvest. And all you need is an electric toothbrush. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. According to most surveys, tomatoes are by far the number one vegetable grown in backyard gardens in the United States and for good reason. Those mealy flavorless orbs that they sell in grocery stores and label tomatoes aren't in the same universe as what you can grow in your backyard garden. So if you want to have delicious tomatoes, you pretty much have to grow them yourself. And for that reason, many of us wait all year long for us to finally harvest those delicious tomatoes off the vine. So imagine how heartbreaking it can be to see our tomato flowers shrivel up and fall off our plants and not set fruit. This is a major problem and it is caused by lack of pollination. In order to get great harvests off of our tomato plants, we need the flowers to properly pollinate. And earlier in the video, I told you that there is a way that you can guarantee to at least double your tomato harvest, and that is true. But before I tell you how to do that, you have to understand how tomatoes are pollinated first. When we discuss flower pollination, most of us think of bees. However, tomato plants are rarely pollinated by bees. That's because the thing that attracts bees to pollen is the carbohydrate content of the pollen itself. And it just so happens to be that tomato plants have low quality carbohydrates. While occasionally a bee will fly to a tomato flower if it really doesn't have anything else to pick from and it needs pollen, given options, it will pick other things. So when you're like me and you have a garden full of citrus plants and blueberry bushes and cucumbers and sunflowers and corn, the bees are pretty much never going to go over to the tomatoes because it's low quality pollen and it's on the bottom of their menu. But luckily, this is not a problem due to the anatomy of the tomato flower itself. The tomato flower has the male and female parts all enclosed in the same flower. So all you have to do in order to pollinate a tomato flower is to have a breeze come along and shake up the tomato flower and all of that male pollen will spill all into the female parts enclosed in the same flower. So for that reason, the overwhelming majority of tomato flowers are actually pollinated by wind, not bees. This is why tomatoes are so popular grown in greenhouses. You don't have to let any bugs in to pollinate your plants for you. All you need to do is basically set up some fans that blow down the aisles of the greenhouses and that will basically shake up the flowers. And you'll see also a lot of old time farmers, one of the tricks that they do to pollinate their flowers is they go to each plant and they just shake them. This is what my father always did. It's what he taught me to do growing up and I've done this my entire life. However, recently I've learned an even better way than shaking your flowers and simply relying relying on wind, which can be very unreliable, because if you get a few calm days in a row, you can actually lose those flowers because they need to be pollinated over the course of only a couple of days before they drop off. So now I'm going to show you my secret to getting nearly 100% pollination on all of your tomato plants. Possibly the best tomato pollination tool that exists on the face of the earth is a simple vibrating electric toothbrush. All you have to do is turn it on the setting that's basically the highest vibration and just touch the backs of the tomato flowers and that will perfectly rattle that tomato pollen around in the flower. When you do this, virtually every single tomato flower will pollinate as long as you don't do it when it's too early and the flower hasn't fully developed or you wait until it's too late and the flower has already started to curl up and shrivel up due to lack of pollination. You don't need any fancy equipment to do this. Any simple basic electric toothbrush will work. This is the very electric toothbrush that I use to brush my teeth in real life. I just keep a spare head. Uh, in my garden shed so I can vibrate my flowers and then once I'm done pollinating the flowers I'll simply rinse off the body and then it's ready to use for later so you don't even need to buy another toothbrush. Uh, to make things easy I'll link to one down in the video description just so you'll have a very affordable one to use that's really cheap in case you don't want to use it for yourself. However again you don't need anything fancy so now I'm going to show you exactly how to do this procedure. Now all you have to do to make this procedure work is you're going to take the back of of the toothbrush, you're going to turn it on and then lightly press the back of the toothbrush up against the flower. And usually when pollination occurs, you will see a stream of pollen shoot out of the flowers themselves. So let me see if I can show you this process. Look at all that pollen dust. 
you can literally see it flying off the flower. That's just incredible. And that pollen dust means uh, pretty much guaranteed you just coated all the female parts in that flower uh, with the pollen. So every single flower is now going to set fruit. Let's see if we can get a little bit of pollen action on this flower cluster right here. Oh, look at that. Look at that pollen just shooting out of there. That is incredible. Guaranteed all of these flowers are now going to set fruit and it's really that easy. Let's try these determinate Roma tomatoes. They're usually loaded with pollen. Oh, lots in that one. Now for those of you watching this video thinking, this is crazy, this is going to take way too long, I'm not going to spend this much amount of time in my garden, well it really only takes seconds per plant, and it really can double if not triple your harvest. So if you're willing to put, I don't know, 10-15 minutes into doing this, maybe twice a month, you can get twice as many tomatoes from your garden. And I want to show you just how quickly you can do this to a plant. And just like that, I just hand pollinated every single flower on this plant. Let's do this dwarf tomato real fast. I mean, it's really no big deal. Wow, look at all that pollen right there on my finger. And when you do this procedure, these are the results you can expect. And keep in mind, these are not cherry tomatoes right here. These are beefsteak tomatoes. They're completely pollinated, every single flower in each cluster. And they go all the way up to the very top of the tomato plant. This variety right here is called Carmelo, so this is not something that is going to guarantee set for you. So to have results like this is abnormal and it's incredibly good. Just look at the pollination results on this brandy wine type. This is a big brandy, which is almost a dead ringer for the brandy wine pink soda strain. Usually on a brandy wine type tomato, you may only get something like six to 10 tomatoes on the entire plant, but just look at them all in this cluster. And this is just one flower cluster right here. The results are exactly the same on this brandy boy plant, which again is a hybridized version of the pink brandy wine. The fruit is almost identical. We have a full cluster cluster of fruits that are set down here, a full cluster of fruits that are set here and here and here. There is more tomatoes on this plant right now than you would get usually on a Brandywine pink that's six feet tall by the end of the season. Beefsteak tomatoes that can set in the heat like this big beef variety is even more impressive. Again, this is a big tomato. These are beefsteaks that will get close to a pound each and you're going to get full tomato clusters when you do this. There's another completely full tomato cluster right here. There are more tomato clusters right here and right here that are in the process of setting. So it's more than likely I will get a couple dozen tomatoes that are anywhere from 12 to 16 ounces a piece off of this plant just in the first three to four feet of the plant itself because I'm hand pollinating and getting full pollination on every flower. And for the cherry tomato types that set fruit much more easily everywhere you look on the plant just forget about it. It's perfect. Every single cluster is 100% full. Now there is one disclaimer to this method. While it is incredible at producing pollinated fruit it can't work beyond the laws of physics. It is not magic. Magic. And what I mean by that is there are climactic conditions where tomato pollination just becomes impossible. So for most larger tomatoes like slicing tomatoes and beefsteak tomatoes, it is basically impossible to pollinate them once days become regularly warmer than 90 degrees and nights become regularly warmer than 70 degrees. And this is especially exacerbated by high dew points once the dew points start reaching the mid 60s and higher. And what happens is, and this is especially worse on larger tomatoes, the pollen 
pollen becomes sticky and globular and it can no longer pollinate the female parts of the flower. So if it is too hot and too humid for too long, it doesn't matter how long you vibrate those flowers, the pollen just isn't viable. So at that point, you can no longer pollinate them and you will still get flower drop. Now the good news is for my viewers in the United States, the overwhelming majority of people don't really see these conditions for more than a few days at a time. Here on the southeastern coast and along the Gulf Coast and in hot areas of Texas in the desert southwest, it is basically normal for dew points to be too high and for nights to get too warm once June, July, and August rolls around for tomato pollination. So the reason why I go through my tomato garden and I hand pollinate now is because it's already starting to get warm and humid and I'm approaching my limit for pollination for these tomatoes. So it's very important that I go ahead and pollinate every single flower in my garden because in another few weeks, pollination will become impossible where I live. But the good news is the overwhelming majority of you probably won't have to deal with this once you start getting north of Virginia on the east coast and you start moving more inland where it cools off at night, where it doesn't stay so persistently humid for days or weeks on end, it's not really an issue. So if you're not in a super hot, humid climate, it's not something that you'll have to worry about. If you do live in the deep south or the coastal south or the desert southwest, this is something you will have to consider. If you do live in areas with these hot, humid conditions where pollination becomes impossible for the larger fruited tomatoes after a certain point, the good news is the cherry types and the Roma types and some of the specific heat set hybrids can still pollinate. So that's why I grow a lot of different cherry tomatoes in my garden now and I grow more Roma types because they can still tend to set pollination. It will be greatly reduced. You won't get those full clusters of fruit anymore, but growing those heat tolerant types is a great way to still have some amount of fruit set and have tomatoes in the latter half of the summer. And that right there is how you can have absolutely incredible yields of tomatoes in your garden. Saying double is really an understatement. You can triple your tomato production, maybe even quadruple them. It is absolutely incredible the amount of pollination you can get when you do this procedure. Now, I just hand pollinated my entire garden, all of my beds, and it only took me 10 minutes. And really, I only do this maybe once every two weeks. So for 10 minutes, twice a month, you can have more tomatoes than you ever thought imaginable, and it is definitely worth your time. So if you've watched this whole video and you still refuse to do this procedure, at least go around and shake all your tomato plants, at least spend a few seconds doing that. But I promise you, if you try the electric toothbrush technique, you will be so impressed. You will never go a season without doing this again. So everybody. I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden, they are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront in the video description, and I'll also place a direct link in the video description for an electric toothbrush as well if you want to do this procedure. If you have any questions about this procedure, please ask them down in the comments below, and I will do my best to address them. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. What a beautiful day at the beach. I'll tell you what kind of crazy people would bring all of their dogs to the beach though. Oh. Oh these types of crazy people. <laughs> these types of crazy people. There's more dogs than humans in this house. What do you think Dale? You're having just the best vacation ever aren't you? When we finally get a really nice beach day, we're going to have to go really soon.